Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and I had a subscriber ask a question which I'll flip in here for you guys and he basically wants to know what's the difference between a high bar and a low bar squat in my opinion and maybe why would a person choose one over the other? Uh, it's a good question, it's a very pertinent question. So let me put on my plus five hat of weapons smithing, do a little bit of crafting and let's talk about it. Uh, now, it's no secret that I generally prefer the closed grip bench press to the wide grip bench press. Uh, for overall strength and development and uh, it's, this is actually going to be for very very similar reasons and I know a lot of people have said, uh, noticed that Greg Knuckles wrote out uh, quite a long analogy on his uh, strength theory blog about uh, the differences between the two and the differences between the two when you get down to the biomechanical level are very very <laughs> complex it's very complex. It's not a real simple, straightforward uh, difference that you're going to describe in 30 seconds uh, because you are dealing with different angles, uh, different torques, different moment arms and everything involved with the movements because of the different bar path, different torso position, footing, everything else. Uh, and in fact, it's probably for anyone not studying biomechanics pretty tedious. Uh, needless to say, in terms of differences of actual muscle function, you could probably say, for most people, and this is the thing, when we get into hip structure anatomy, humans are very, very different. We have a wide variety of, of hip bone structure angles and protrusions and everything, and it's really fascinating, which makes things a little complicated on some of this from person to person. But generally speaking, most people are probably going to get a little bit more quadricep work doing a high bar squat. They're going to probably work their quads a little more. And conversely, if they do a low bar squat, they're probably going to work their hips and uh, the erectors in their back just a little bit more. Now, is that a universal statement? No. And by a little more, is this going to be an enormous difference? Like if you go from low bar squat to high bar squat, are your, your quads just going to explode in size? No, probably not. Probably not at all. There are slight differences. And there are slight differences at which point in the movement certain muscles might be a little more dominant than others. Uh, but at the end of the day, you've got to remember they're both still a squat. They're both still a full body movement that works over half the muscles in the body and pushes a uh, fairly heavy weight through a very long range of motion. Uh, so in terms of things like strength and development, they're both suitable. They're both excellent exercises. Either type of squat is not a incorrect choice for gaining size or strength. No matter what your endeavor is uh, that you're, you're training for, I don't care whether it's, uh, you know, strongman, football, bodybuilding, whatever. Uh, neither one of them is wrong. We're just going to get into subtle differences in theory. Now, when it comes to the differences on the weight on the bar for Many people, for many people, and, and we could go so far as to say many meaning over half, there's going to be a slight variance in the amount of weight you can lift. And it has to do with the placement of the bar and how far you move. All right. With a low bar squat, and generally with a wider stance, if you hunched over more and with the weight lower down your back, the full range of motion on the exercise is going to be shorter. For some people, it could be as much as three or four inches difference. Now, three or four inches isn't a lot. It's not a big difference on a, a movement as big as a barbell squat. But when you're talking lifting maximum poundages, that few inches could make up to 5% difference. And I think even uh, Greg Knuckles noted that. If I recall, and I could be wrong, I think he noted that you can expect to, in many cases, depending upon uh, an athlete's structure, up to 5% more strength, 5% more weight move, not strength, there is a difference. Up to 5% more weight move with a low bar squat. So, uh, what that means is that someone who practiced both regularly, or at least their potential, who might be able to get to, say, a 500 squat with a high bar, might get up to 525 with a low bar. Probably not going to make a difference of winning at a meet, but it could if you're a power lifter. So the general advice is that a power lifter would very probably want to consider, depending upon their structure, doing the low bar squat. However, I high bar squat at meets, and you guys have seen me in the past high bar squat to 500 plus pounds. I've done it on video more than once. 
just not in a while because I quit squatting. I got tired of squatting. And I think it's fair to say when you squat over 500 pounds raw and you just decide that you're tired of squatting and want to deadlift more instead, I think that's totally fair. That's reasonable. It's a personal call. You know, by me quitting squatting, I get to do the deadlift more, which I enjoy more. It's harder to recover from. Squat when I'm gone, I only have to worry about the deadlift. <laughs> uh, personal choice, though. But the thing is, that longer range of motion is interesting. Um, it's very interesting. And I remember a strength and conditioning coach, Matt Griffith, uh, would chatted with me at a meet uh, that I did over in the UK that he liked seeing people up there doing the high bar squat. And his opinion is that for athleticism, the high bar squat's better. And this is a very respected strength and conditioning coach. Um, anyone over in the UK probably knows who he is. Uh, and, you know, and he said that to me briefly, personally, just in passing, uh, when he was refereeing. Now, the, the reason for that, when you think about it from some different perspectives, the longer range of motion means that you can probably develop more size and strength overall with a slightly lighter weight. All right? Partial reps oftentimes in cutting ranges of motion allow you to lift them a little more weight, but weight lifted is not the same as the total work done or the total tension you've applied done. There is a difference. There is a difference. And in this case, you're moving the weight slightly further, meaning moving 500 pounds on the high bar squat requires a little more work than 500 pounds on the low bar. That means a little more muscle fiber recruitment. Uh, and training through longer ranges of motion can make people better athletes because it gives them strength through more angles in different muscles. Meaning if you're trying to make your entire body as strong as possible, picking longer range of, of motion variations of exercises to do your heavy work in will somewhere in some of the joint angles give you slightly better uh, strength through a longer range of motion. It's generally a good practice. Is it required? No, but it's, it's a good practice. Uh, partial reps just to add more weight to a bar isn't always the best way to get stronger. Sure, you can get stronger doing it. Sure, you can get bigger, but you are cheating yourself through certain um, strength potential in different ranges of motion where you're not getting quite as much carryover. Now, the, also the thing to consider, there's two other points for an athlete, a field athlete of any type, well, any athlete. Most athletes, when they're doing anything on a field, their, their stance tends to rarely be wider than shoulder width. Right? They don't run these ultra-wide stances you see on lower, low bar squats. They tend to run a narrower stance uh, for most things. Shoulder width is, is very common in many sports. Uh, for everything from sprinting on a field to hitting someone on a playing field in a contact sport, uh, jumping everything you very rarely go much wider than shoulder width like you do on a low bar squat therefore with footing being similar you're probably going to get more carryover uh, to more athletic endeavors is it going to be tremendously different no like is it going to make you 30 percent better no a little tiny difference but you know what on a playing field little tiny differences can sometimes make the difference between winning and losing all right, on any, any competitive sport. So better potential carryover for athleticism. Also, the high bar squat works the lower back slightly less. Most athletes are already doing other exercises that really hammer their lower back, their spinal erectors hard, particularly if you deadlift, do barbell rows, power cleans, any of those things. Those things work your spinal erectors hard. Spinal erectors oftentimes are a slow muscle to recover. All right. Spinal erectors have a tendency to get fatigued. Well, they, they, they can handle a high workload, but once they're fatigued, they can recover a little slower than a lot of other muscles in the body. So by having that exercise made, one of your big primary exercises like the squat, maybe hammer them just a little less. Uh, it might be better for field athletes, particularly athletes who compete in contact sports. Um, because again, those muscles are still being worked heavily, but they're not being fatigued as much all the time with every big exercise. Uh, so it can be helpful in keeping them from uh, fatiguing their lower back. That's one reason that uh, trap bars, hex bar deadlifts are, are very common for a lot of field athletes. A lot of strength and conditioning coaches recommend them for that reason. Uh, the same logic can be applied to a high bar squat versus a low bar squat for that same reason. Uh, so there's other factors involved there. And so just like with a lot of other exercises, there are good reasons why someone who's trying to get uh, the best athleticism possible 
uh, would do those. And again, same thing can be applied. If you can get the same strength and size using a 5% lighter weight because you're moving it through a longer range of motion and you're doing it with a variation, it's going to put less stress on a, a slightly vulnerable area like the lower back. I mean, and people need to understand the lower back isn't as vulnerable as it's been made out to be. It is overhyped as far as that goes, but it is a somewhat vulnerable area that is going to get a heavy pounding. Um, it's more likely to be overly fatigued or be put at risk if you're going to be doing very large volumes of training if you're taking a variation like the high bar squat uh, instead of the low bar. So just little minor points there, a little minor data points to consider. Uh, so that's the reason that for most people who do just want to be more athletic, um, the lowest injury rate possible, gain as much size and strength as possible, I oftentimes recommend the high bar squat. But for many people who say compete in powerlifting who need the highest max squat possible in a truly competitive environment, I might recommend the low bar. Um, but you know what? You could cross over and do the other, and it's probably not going to be world-ending. It's probably not going to make or break you in the grand scheme of things. It could just be one little minor variable stacked in. Uh, so if you're doing the opposite of what I said, it's not like it makes you guilty of making a really bad choice or anything, because they're still both great exercises. They're both great exercises, uh, either variations, for anyone trying to get bigger or stronger. Um, those are just, we're just talking minor differences of why you might pick one versus the other. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.